Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I am happy to be with you um, for this episode. I am also tired. Man, do you ever have those weeks that just feel like they've already gone on for like a month? I keep forgetting that it's only Tuesday because this week literally, not literally, no, figuratively, metaphorically, something has lasted for... uh, a month, a year, a, a millennium. I'm really not sure, but it's only Tuesday. <laughs> At any rate, I am tired, but I am excited because I have a returning guest on the podcast today. Author Carmela Dutra joined me a while back to talk about the first book in her Little Katie series, and that one is Little Katie Goes to the Moon. Today, she joins me to talk about another Little Katie adventure, uh, Little Katie explores the coral reefs. Now, if you didn't tune into that first episode, little Katie is um, a young woman. Uh, Not sure how old she is. Doesn't really matter. She's a little girl who loves to use her imagination, loves to explore. Um, In the first book, she goes to the moon. Does she really go to the moon? Well, you know, she's got a great imagination. And these books are full of wonderful drawings and delightful stories, but they're also full of lots of facts and interesting, um, you'll learn a lot even if you you know you don't even if you're an adult you'll learn a lot from these books so as I said in the first book little Katie goes to the moon with her dog smudge and in this book she is exploring coral reefs so the description of the book is dive beneath the sparkling surfaces of sapphire blue seas and discover the beauty of coral reefs Join little Katie and her puppy Smudge as they journey into the waters and discover all the magic that lies beneath the surface. Learn the secrets of the rainforests of the sea as you embark on an oceanic safari of the world's most vibrant and endangered marine ecosystems. So, as I said, these books are full of great, interesting tidbits. Um, Carmela is very interested in promoting STEM and STEAM, so science, technology, um, engineering, excuse me, arts and math, especially among underrepresented people in those groups, so um, women, minorities, etc. And she talks about that in the interview. And so little Katie just loves to learn and she loves to explore and by her loving to learn and loving to exploring, the reader, whatever age he or she may be, gets to learn along with little Katie. And so um, I love the pictures in this book. They're so vibrant and fun and they just draw you in and and um, they're they're just, they're so sweet. The pictures are so sweet. And I I hope that doesn't sound weird or anything, but I just love them. They're, they're bright and fun and sweet. And so I am going to actually turn this conversation over to the interview so that you can hear Carmela talk about her own books. Again, uh, it's the Little Katie series and it this one that we'll be talking about today is Little Katie Explores the Coral Reefs. So let's go ahead and get to that interview with author Carmela Dutra. Hi, Carmela. Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much, Sarah, for having me. I'm so excited to join you again. It's wonderful to have you back, and we are here to talk about your newest Little Katie book. And before we get to the book, though, if in case people didn't hear the first interview or they want a refresher, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. My name is Carmela Dutra. I'm an award-winning author and illustrator from the San Jose Bay Area. I work a lot with children and educators throughout my area, even sometimes I travel to other states, 
to help inspire reading and writing within the classroom. I've written five children's books, and the first book in the Little Katie series is Little Katie Goes to the Moon. Yes, and so now we have um, Little Katie Explores the Coral Reef. So tell us a bit about this story. I'm really excited for this one because I've always, even though I am myself am not a big fan of the water, I do really like all of the things that are below the surface because I think there is so much beauty that lies within the ocean. And that's what this book goes into. The reader is going to dive beneath the sparkling surfaces of the sapphire blue seas and discover all of the beauty that lies within the coral reef. So you're going to join little Katie and her puppy Smudge as you journey into the waters. You're going to discover all of the magic that lies beneath the surface, learn the secrets of the rainforest of the sea as you embark on what I like to think of it as an oceanic safari. So you're going to learn about some of the different fish and the marine life that live down there, some different things about symbiosis, and just overall how important ocean life is for us here on the dry land. Mm -hmm. And I um, I love the story and your illustrations as always are beautiful. Uh, on, a, on a slight side note, I giggled when um, little Katie told her dog Smudge that he couldn't wear a Speedo. <laughs> I was like, thank you, little Katie. <laughs> a funny story about that. So this book, um, there was a fifth grade class who helped come up with ideas for the illustrations. And when I had put that part in the book about the Speedo, some of the kids didn't know what a Speedo was. And they're like, we had to Google that. And I was like, oh, no, 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 don't, don't, don't Google that. <laughs> and so it was so funny. They're like, we had no idea that even existed. I didn't know there was such a thing. And I was, I was dying so hard of laughter from their reaction to what a Speedo was. And then I asked, I'm like, well, do you think I should get rid of that? And they're like, no, it's so funny. We have to keep uh, smudge with a Speedo. That's hilarious. They're all going to need some sort of therapy from Googling Speedo. <laughs> I know. And I was like, oh, gosh, thank goodness they did it at school where it's safe. Safe to look at that right. stuff, I guess, so you can right. say. Right. Um, although I'm just imagining the conversations around the dinner tables at home. Yeah. <laughs> Their parents are like, you're never going to work with her again. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your inspiration for this particular story? Honestly, I had actually been hearing a lot of commercials over the radio about when um, one of the museums out in San Francisco, they were holding a special exhibit focusing on the coral of the reef. And they were journeying into like the discussion about how vital this ecosystem is for life and why it's so important that we take care of it. And it was a, um, it was just a small little exhibit that they had. It, it only lasted, I think, for maybe nine months. And that's really what did it. I started looking at everything and I started thinking about, you know, this really is important, not just, you know, from the bleaching with the coral reefs out there and the Great Barrier Reef, but just simple things like not put, pouring bad stuff down the drain, not polluting, how that has a direct impact on the ocean life, which will ultimately come back and affect us. And I thought this would be a great idea and a fun way to share this information with kids. Mm -hmm. So what kind of research did you do on coral reefs? Um, I actually did um, very similar to what I did with the first book with Little Katie Goes to the Moon. It took me about maybe three to four months worth of research. So I had on this one, I had used a lot of National Geographic information. So I went to the National Geographic website, um, one that they also have designed for kids. There's a science website specifically for kids with oceanic facts. And I also just went to my local library and did the old school research of pulling books and encyclopedias off the shelf to get more information. Nice. Not many people even use encyclopedias anymore, or at least hard copy encyclopedias. I I do like the smell of a book, so in <laughs> if, I, if I have the opportunity to use a hardcover book, I will. I agree. Um, one thing that I like about your books is that they are very informative, and um, you don't shy away from you know you. It's a picture book, so there's beautiful illustrations, but you don't really simplify the language too much. Um, so what age groups would you recommend the books for? Definitely all of elementary school can benefit from these books. I've used it as young as kindergarten up to fifth grade. So there is a wide age range going from about six years old all the way up to about like 11, 12 year olds. And 
yes, you are true. There is a lot of uh, challenge words that I do put in the books, but I do feel that that is beneficial for kids to help expand their vocabulary and the understanding of words. So at the end of each book, I have a glossary of terms to help them understand what those words are that they're learning in the book. So when it's the younger grades, like kindergarten, first, second grade, sometimes as we're reading the stories in class, we might stop and I'll ask them, like, did you understand what that meant? And I'll just kind of explain it to them briefly. Um, and like the word symbiosis is used in the book. And if you turn the next page, it explains what it is for them. So I try to do it in a way that it's not going to be so overwhelming, like it's a dictionary thrown at them. But then it's even the older grades, like third, fourth, and fifth, it's not written so juvenile for them that it's boring for them either. So now you have an idea about Little Katie Explores the Coral Reefs. We are going to go ahead and take a break for the podcast, but when we come back, we'll be talking um, a little bit more about this book and about the first book, Little Katie Goes to the Moon. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. Before the break, we were talking about Little Katie Explores the Coral Reefs, and now we are going to talk about Little Katie Goes to the Moon and um, lots of other stuff. So let's get back to that interview. And so this is Little Katie Explores the Coral Reef. Little Katie has also gone to the moon. Um, we, we talked about that one in the first interview, but can you give us just a brief synopsis of that one as well? Yeah, so with this one, um, again, it's a, the same concept of, like you said, there's a lot of um, facts in the book. So it's an informational, educational book. And in this one, you're going to discover why satellites are important, exploring information about spacesuits, using your imagination to fly in a rocket ship, learning about who landed on the moon first, some of the things that were left behind on the moon, and a lot more. So really, it just gives you a lot of information about the moon itself. Mm-hmm. And little Katie really uses her imagination well in these stories. Um, you know, she goes to the moon, she goes to the coral reefs, but when you get to the end of the book, you find out that she really hasn't left her house. <laughs> and um, talk a little bit about, um, let me see how to, how to phrase this. I just really like that little Katie uses her imagination so much. So um, how do you... Do you deliberately think about that while you're writing, trying to encourage um, the children who are reading the books to use their imagination? I do. Um, when I was around the age of what I envisioned little Katie to be, I loved cardboard boxes and I would build all kinds of things with them. And I would play in the backyard with uh, some of my dad's tools. My dad was an auto body. So I remember I'd play with his spot welder and I would have his different tools that he used for uh, removing dents and I was pretending I was a chef at like a like a little cart outside and it was always with my imagination and I would have the boxes set up for the tables and I feel that using your imagination in play is so vital with just childhood and growing up and then continuing to still your, use your imagination to deal with everyday problems so I wanted something that would encourage kids to continue to use their imagination would inspire them that it's okay to still play with boxes. You're never too old to play with boxes or to play in your swimming pool and pretend that you're snorkeling in the Great Barrier Reef. But at the same time, I also want the books to be um, so fun and that they're so caught up in it that they don't realize they're learning at the same time because the reaction that I get every time I finish the book is like, she didn't really go to outer space. (laughs) She didn't really swim in the ocean. And I'm like, we didn't know that <laughs> because they get so caught up in the story and it seems so believable to them. I'm like, but if you use your imagination, you can do the same thing. Right. That's awesome. Um, I do have to just go back and comment on a, a phrase I did not expect to hear today was that I played with my dad's spot welder. I loved it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just not something you often hear. <laughs> yeah, I 
I, I should I should um explain that real quick. It wasn't turned on. He always made sure it was <laughs> unplugged. But the way it was set up is it looked like like one of those little mini like food trucks almost in a way like the little side carts that they would have like a little barbecuer and so I would play on on the top of it my dad did auto body for 40 years and he he worked in the backyard it, or his backyard was converted over into his auto body shop so I played with a lot of stuff that I shouldn't have played with it was back you know back in the 90s 80s you didn't have the same regulations that kids probably should have today and that right. they do have so there's a lot of stuff that I shouldn't have played with but I did and I'm alive to tell about it, so I think it was okay. <laughs> right, right, right. It just made me laugh because my husband's father was the same way. He had his auto repair in their in the garage in their backyard. So, um, it wasn't my childhood, but I, I I've heard other similar stories. <laughs> um, you have mentioned it a little bit um, that you work with classes and elementary schools. Can you talk a little bit about that work? Yeah, this is uh, my favorite part of being an author, is having the privilege to be able to go in and work with the schools. Currently, right now, I'm working with four different school districts throughout the San Jose Bay Area, extending out to Gilroy, Sunnyvale, Morgan Hill, Campbell, San Jose, various areas. Um, and the, the districts, what they do is they usually book me for about a week to spend with the kids. And it's so fantastic because I'm able to go in and do personal classroom visits with every grade in the school. And I'm really to able to focus one-on-one -on -one with the students. We spend an hour in the classroom together, reading one of my stories, talking about it, dissecting what it's like to write a book. And then we go into an activity that's related to one of the stories that we've read. Usually it's the, um, the principal allows the teachers to pick which story they would like. Different grades are focusing on different things. Um, so some of the grades are more geared toward Little Katie Goes to the Moon because they're learning about it at that particular time, whereas some of the other grades are more interested in the Little Katie Explores the Coral Reef. So all of the activities that we do are educational that go along with the, the story that we've just read, and they all fit, all of my visits fit within the um, STEM to STEAM um, Common Core curriculum. So it's been a wonderful opportunity to work with the educators and the students at all these various schools and to be able to have the opportunity to do multiple visits at these schools over the years to see how the children have really grown from some of my first visits where they were so shy I couldn't even get them to draw a picture to returning finding out that they're some of the best uh, imaginative storytellers in their class. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. And I know you've worked with some of the classes. Uh, you mentioned it with the with the Speedo story that they kind of give you ideas for illustrations and stuff. How does that work? How do you decide which classes work on those types of projects? You know, that um, sometimes I, I do have a certain class in mind. Um, there was a third grade classroom from um, a school in Melpitas, Miss Ruck, her classroom. They helped not only with the illustrations, but the actual story concept for one of my previous books, one of my Lorenzo books. Now, with this one, with the Little Katie Coral Reef, that kind of just fell into place. That wasn't planned. Um, there was a slight misunderstanding between the teacher and I when we were communicating via email about some of the class projects that we were going to be working on together. And she knew that I had a new book coming out, but I hadn't done the illustrations yet. So one of the things that we had talked about was using her classroom to be beta readers to get their insight on how the story sounded to them. And so when I was in the classroom reading it to them, I was asking them what their thoughts were because they had been working on um, narrative writing in school. So I thought like, oh, this is perfect. They can give me some insight. I have my target grade range right here. They're able to, to really work with me and give me their insights. And at the end of the visit, the teacher said, okay, and guess what, kids? I have an exciting surprise for you. You get to help do the illustrations, too. Oh, no. <laughs> and they got so excited, I couldn't say no. Really? So I'm like, okay, we're going to do it. And in, they ended up giving me some great ideas. Really, they did. Um, I had some of the pages. I had a different mindset of how I was going to do them. But they went in a completely different direction. And I loved it so much. I'm like, you know what? That's what I'm going to do with that illustration. Um, like one of the pages, it talks about how um, a coral reef, one of the illustrations that is used is an apartment building in New York City to describe what a coral reef is like and how it's an oasis and like it's apartment building, how they're all next to each other, providing shelter for the marine life, 
um, they all live together in the, in the same area. And in my mind, I was thinking an oasis like in a desert. But one of the students drew a picture of an apartment building in New York City. And I was like, you know what? That fits perfect. That's what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. And that's what's in the book. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. You also, I know um, that childhood literacy is one of your passions. So um, can you share some of the work that you do around that topic? Yeah. So uh, some of the schools that I've worked with, they're, um, the, stu- the students are amazing. They're just struggling in some, some of those areas, especially with reading. They're far below where um, ideally they should be. So that's become an area that I'm focusing on very strongly with is to help encourage that love of reading because they just don't have the love of reading. They don't have a desire. They've never found books that they've liked. They've never been able to really explore and pick out their own books, which I feel is key to helping develop that love and starting early. So that's why with every one of my visits, we always read a story together. We doesn't matter if they're kindergartners or they're fifth grade. We all sit on the floor together in their, in a story time circle and we read the book together, we show the pictures, and we talk about it. Um, something that I do with my son, I started that from when he was in the womb, when, you know, I've been reading to him, he was able to understand, and I could tell the way he would move in my womb, he was hearing what I was saying, and he's three years old, and he has a, I think he actually has a bigger library than me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one thing I can't say no to him is books, and he plays that card to his advantage so much he can't get a toy every time we go somewhere but he can always get a book (laughs) and he loves books I'll find him it's usually too quiet when a three-year-old is by himself but I'll find him with a pile of books just looking at the pictures so I really try as early as I can to instill that with my own family and with the schools starting from the very first visit talking about the importance of books and then I ask the kids what books do you want to read what books do you like to read what can I do to help you get excited about wanting to read a book what book is it going to take to spark that interest for you I really love how passionate Carmela is about learning and literacy STEM and STEAM I, I love that she's encouraging children, people of all ages to read and get interested in topics that they might not otherwise uh, explore. So uh, we are going to take our second break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking a little bit about what um, what her son is reading and um, other topics. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and we'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. SMC Book Review Podcast. We're going to go ahead and jump right back in to the conclusion of my interview with author Carmela Dutra about her Little Katie series. And what are your son's favorites right now? Not my books. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, does, he does like the Coral Reef book just because it is colorful. But right now he's actually, he's really into the Mo Williams stories, The Elephant and Piggy mm-hmm. um, by Mo Williams. He just loves those stories. Um, they're very simplistic illustrations and very little dialogue on each page, but they're perfect for him. And each book is about like 50 something pages. And then his other ones that are his favorite are anything with animals in it. So we have a lot of National Geographic books and those ones where it actually shows the real life pictures of the animals. He just goes crazy over those. 
Nice. Thank you. And um, what have you been reading? I know that uh, I follow you on social media, so and, and I get your newsletter, so I know that you have kind of pared down your your reading goal for this year to focus more on reading with your son. But when you read for yourself, what do you read? I've been, I'm, I've always been a stickler, stickler for um, a good mystery that will always catch my attention. So right now I'm currently reading Artemis by Andy Weir, the author who wrote The Martian. Um, I had finished The Martian last year, and I I really did enjoy it. So then I wanted to read his second book, and I'm very much enjoying that. And then I also am waiting for one of the um, newest sci-fi authors that I started following that I found him last year, Sullivan Nouvelle. I fell in love with his Thema series. He has a new short story coming out, a dystopian style that um, I'll, I can't wait to get my hands into. And then I have a, another Italian author, um, his books get translated into English. Um, Andre Camillari, I believe is his last name, how you pronounce it. And his is all mystery. And so I've been working my way through that series as well. Okay. Thank you. You have a website. So tell people the, um, where they can find your website and where they can find you on social media. Yeah, so you can visit my website, CarmelaDutra.com. That's C-A-R-M-E-L-A-D-U-T-R-A.com. You can find me on Instagram at Author Carmela, and on Facebook, I'm Author Carmela Dutra. I'm also active on Twitter at Carmi4077, C-A-R-M-Y. 4077. I'm a MASH fan, so that's where the 4077 comes oh. from. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, thank you for that. Is there anything else that we haven't talked about that you'd like for people to know about um, writing or your books or anything? I think just that if anyone has something that they want to write, don't be afraid and just write it. Let it let it out and see where it takes you. The hardest part is just doing that first draft. So, so write your first draft and see what happens. Worst case is it doesn't go anywhere, but at least you've been able to say that you've been able to write your story that you had in your head. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I just realized that I forgot to ask, what's next for little Katie? Well, there's a couple of different directions I'm thinking of heading with her. So I do have a a third book that's in the works that I'm hoping to release this year. Uh, It's going to be an engineering book. Uh, So she's going to, there's going to be talking about some lovers, pulleys, and I'm thinking there's going to be a catapult in the book. And I'm going to start introducing some other characters into the book. So these first two books, she's had mama with her, but now she's going to have daddy And she's going to have a friend in the book in addition to Smudge. Another um, little girl is going to join the book. And I also have another story with little Katie where it's going to be um, a little boy who's going to join the book with her as well. So I'm going to start integrating some more characters into the book to also just kind of really balance everything out because I'm all about encouraging girls in science but I really want to touch on all topics of the diversity too, because it's not just girls who are underrepresented in the science field. It's all minorities. So Mm -hmm. I really want to help bridge that gap and for them to have books as children to read, to be like, you know what? I can use my imagination as a, as a little girl and I can do different areas of science or engineering when I get older. It's, it's not just for boys. Mm -hmm. And, then I was also, I've been bouncing around an idea in my head with little Katie. So right now they're all kind of in a dialogue back and forth, your atypical picture book. But I've also been thinking of maybe like a little Katie presents where it's a bit more straightforward, more in like a narration standpoint to kind of break some um, bigger things down for kids. Okay, fun. I am looking forward to those. Um I enjoy them and I've learned things from them. So, hey. <laughs> hey, that's good. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what age you are. You can learn from little Katie. So, hey, picture um, books are just as much for the parents as they are for the kids. Trust me, there are some of my son's picture books that I'm just like, I cannot read this another time over. And I'm just, I'm, I, I can't. And then yeah. there's other ones I'm like, I want to read this one, honey. I love this one. So, picture yeah. books are written just as much for the adults as they are the kids. 
I agree. I agree. Um, I want to thank you for coming back uh, to talk about little Katie again. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much, Sarah, for having me. This has been a wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to my guest, Carmela Dutra, for joining me to talk about her Little Katie series and the newest in that series, Little Katie Explores the Coral Reefs. If you are interested in the Little Katie series, you should definitely check them out, um, whether that's from your library or buying them or what have you. Uh, Or you can enter a giveaway and win a copy of Little Katie Explores the Coral Reefs. That's very easy to do. All you have to do is go to Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, GSMC Book Review, and you can find all of those uh, links on our website and, um, and in the show notes for this episode. And just comment on this episode, which is episode 136, Interview with Carmela Dutra. That is it. Go to one of those three places, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, our page, and comment on this episode, and you'll automatically be entered to win a copy of Little Katie Explores the Coral Reefs. Whether you have a little one or um, you just want to read it for yourself, I mean, I enjoyed the heck out of it. So, And I... I learned something from both books, from Little Katie Goes to the Moon and Little Katie Explores the Coral Reefs. So if you like to learn, this is the book for you. Thank you so much again to my guest, Carmela Dutra. Thank you, as always, to you, my listeners. Please continue to listen and support this podcast. I I appreciate you more than you can possibly know. Um, I hope that you're having a wonderful week, that your week has not lasted 800 million trillion gazillion years like mine has. And... If it has, I hope that's given you ample time to go out there and get yourself lost in a really good book. Join me next time. Thanks. Bye. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from Move to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program